Hey, Mr. Richards here, recording this on a Sunday afternoon after yet another Cleveland Browns loss. Yep. Even though it's 2013 as I'm recording this, I have a feeling even if you were listening to this in 2014, 2015, or any year in the fall, that if it's Sunday, it probably means the Browns just lost another game. And our real-world example here today involving slope-intercept form comes to us about football. And ironically, interceptions. An interception in football is when a defensive player catches a pass made by an offensive player. In a non-proportional linear relationship, the graph passes through the point 0B, which is here on the graph, or the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis. The y-intercept of a line is the y-coordinate of the point where the line crosses the y-axis. So it's that B. That B is the y-intercept there. Wherever that is on the y-axis, that's where it crosses, that is B. Now, we're going to do a little bit of algebra here to complete the steps to derive the equation for a non-proportional linear relationship by using the slope formula. Why non-proportional instead of proportional? Well, remember, all proportional relationships go through the origin 0, 0. So they don't, well, they have a y-intercept, but it's 0. So we're looking at non-proportional linear relationships since those don't go through the origin. They go somewhere else on the y-axis, which we're calling the y-intercept. Now, our first step in all of this is to write the slope formula. Well, remember, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals m. Now, they made a substitution in here. They were saying our x1, y1 was the 0b, so I'll put that on the graph to kind of show you to make sure you can see it, x1, y1. And our x2, y2 was just the x, y out there, so that was our x2, y2. That way you can see how they made this substitution in, that our y2 was the y, our y1 was the b, the x2 was just the x, and the x1 was the 0. So they took these points and made their substitutions in. Now, our next step is to simplify. Well, y minus b cannot be simplified, but x minus 0, anything minus 0 is just that number, so that's just x. Or something like that. I can rewrite that in there. x, that's yeah, better. Now, I can write this m over 1. Any number can be written over 1. Now, if I do some cross multiplication here, y minus b over 1 is just that y minus b. Excuse me, y minus b times 1 is just the y minus b. Then our x times m goes here or just mx, if we're going to do this in alphabetical order and match the formula that we're supposed to come up with. And the plus b, then, can also come in, since we can add b to both sides of the equation and end up down there. So, basically, a roundabout way of getting from our slope formula, which we've been working with, down to our new slope-intercept form of a line where y equals m, which is our slope, x plus b, which is our y-intercept. Now, how can you know about an interception in football, and how can that help remember the definition of a y-intercept? Well, an interception in football is when the defensive player catches a pass um, that was supposed to be intended for an offensive player. Okay, I guess you can link that a little bit with it crosses the offensive player, gets in the way of the football, and just, it's an intersection point. Well, a y-intercept is the intersection point with the y-axis, so interception, intersection, you can kind of see where it's going. Let's continue on. Now, I love the slope-intercept of the line. It is really a neat form to use y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. 
So we can use this form of a line and several equations to just look at the equation and say this is my slope and this is my y-intercept. And eventually, once you know that's the slope and that's the y-intercept, we can actually go and graph these things. So, one step at a time though, let's try to identify our slopes in all of these first. Now, our slope is this m portion, which is just to the left of the x. It's what we're multiplying the x by. Well, in part a here, we have the negative 5. In part b, we have the 1 fourth. And something kind of cool happens in part c. Here, it's a negative x. Well, another way to write part c is y equals negative 1 x plus 5. So our slope is actually negative 1. Now, we also have our y-intercepts. And that can be identified right there, right here, right here, right here. So our y-intercept in our part A is 3. Now, something kind of neat about B, we have a minus 6 here. Well, this was a plus 3, which meant we just wrote the 3. But we cannot ignore the minus 6. It's going to be negative 6. And in C, it is 5. So just to finish off our answer, just to make sure we understand that m is our slope, our slope is negative 5 in part a, whereas our y-intercept is 3. Our slope in part b is the fraction 1 fourth, whereas our y-intercept is the b, which is negative 6. The slope in part c is that negative 1. It's not 0 because you don't see a number there. It's not just 1 because there's a negative there, so it's a negative 1. Again, it's, it's not 0. It's, it's negative 1. And our y-intercept equals 5. So if you can look and identify, okay, this is in slope-intercept form. It's in the y equals mx plus b. And the number multiplied by the x is your slope. Number either adding or subtracting here, usually adding, but sometimes subtracting. That's the y-intercept. When it's positive, our y-intercepts are positive. When it's negative or subtracting, our y-intercept is negative. Let's continue on. Now, knowing this form, we can write an equation in slope-intercept form for the graph shown. Let's start there before looking at E. Let's identify our two points first. Our points are the y-intercept, which here is 0, negative 2, and our second point, 1, 2, 3, is 3, and then 1, 2, 3 up, so 3, 3. Easy enough. Now, we need to calculate slope. We need to find the slope of the line. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And before we go any further, let's be sure to identify these points. We can call this one our x1, y1, and the one up here our x2, y2. That way when we make our substitutions in, it might make it a little easier. So slope is going to equal our y2 is 3 minus our y1 of negative 2 over our x2 of 3 minus our x1 of 0. Now this is going to be 3 minus negative 2 is the same thing as 3 plus 2, which is 5, over 3 minus 0 is 3. So our slope is 5 thirds. Now what is my y-intercept? What is that b? Well, that's right here. It's the y-coordinate, though, where it crosses, which is negative 2. So once I have my m and once I have my slope, or my y-intercept, I can write this in slope-intercept form. So I have y equals mx plus b. 
So my y is going to equal my slope, which was 5 thirds x plus my y-intercept, which was negative 2. So I could actually write that, and I'll write it up here, is y equals 5 thirds x minus 2. And that is the best form of that line. Now, write an equation in part e of a line in slope-intercept form with a slope of 3 fourths and a y-intercept of negative 3. Well, they already did the hard work for you. Our slope is going to be our m in our formula, which is 3 fourths. Our y-intercept is negative 3. They did all the work for us already. y is going to equal m x plus b. So our y is going to equal the 3 fourths x plus our b of negative 3. And just to make this easier, and y equals 3 fourths x minus 3. So if we're given our slope and y-intercept, man, just substitute them into your formula. And you have y equals 3 fourths x minus 3. So in part D, you had to do a little bit more work. You actually had to calculate the slope of the line, find the y-intercept, and make it work. Part E, a little bit easier since they give you the slope and they give you the y-intercept, and all you have to do is substitute those in. Now in our last two examples, 4 and 5 here, a taxi fare y can be determined by the equation y equals 50 hundredths x plus 3 and 50 hundredths, where x is the number of miles traveled. Graph the equation. Okay. Well, let's first find our slope and our y-intercept here. Our slope is 0 0.50, which is the same thing as 1 half. Our y-intercept, well, that is 3.50 or 350. So now as we go to graph these, the y-intercept is here at 350 in between the 3 and the 4. And remember, slope is the same thing as rise over run. So we're going to rise 1 and run 2. So up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. And again, to make sure we kind of saw the counting there, we went up 1 over 2. And then up 1 over 2. And I'll get that graph here. Up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. And then up 1 over 2, and that's where we'll stop on this graph. And if you wanted to draw the line in, you certainly could. Interpret the slope and the y-intercept. Well, let's start with the y-intercept. The y-intercept... of $3.50. Let's see. How far have we traveled? We haven't traveled at all. We've gone zero miles, but we're still paying $3.50, so the $3.50 must mean that that is our base fare. That is the fare that we just pay no matter how far we've gone. So the y-intercept of $3.50 is the base fare of the taxi, meaning it's what we're going to pay no matter what, 350 plus whatever we do for the miles driven. And well, the slope then of 0 0.50, a 
let's see, 50 cents times the number of miles. So if we've gone one mile or two miles, we're increasing our what we pay. So the slope of 50 cents, that must mean that it is what we pay per mile driven. So the slope of 50 cents is the amount paid for each mile traveled. So the y-intercept, we haven't traveled anywhere. So that's the base fare of the cab. But the slope of 50 cents, you know, up one over two, up one over two, that represents the amount of money paid for each mile traveled. Hmm. All right. Well, good luck.